people are lonely, and a visit would mean the world to them. Uh, so come and go, go visiting for a little while Saturday morning. Um, also, our revival, August 24th, uh, 5th, uh, and 6th, I think, of August, 24th, 5th, and 6th, if it's the Lord's will, uh, and we're still able to do it. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in this world we're living in. Like I said this morning, uh, you don't, you, you can't, you can't, you can't trust what you hear on TV either way, right or left or middle or sideways. But you can believe this book, and so uh, let's trust the Lord. All right, John chapter number nine this evening. I want to bring you just a very, very brief, very short. I won't preach long at all tonight, and uh, uh, but I'm going to just get hit a little nail on the head here. I know that some of you still got a little camp jet lag. We got some of them stayed in bed all day yesterday. They can't get up. They're so tired and wore out. And that's what camp does. That's camp. But um, I want to look here at, at, a, at a great verse here and the story. I won't read all this story. But it's John chapter 9 verse 1 said, and as Jesus passed by, as Jesus passed by, I'm glad that's in there. He saw a man. That was me one day that he seen. I was little brother Danny. I wasn't brother Danny then. I was just little Danny up there at Nebo Baptist Church. And he saw a man that was blind from his birth. And the Lord passed by this man. And you know the story on down through there. He heals him and, and he, uh, he uh, gets healed. And great and mighty things happen. And uh, for years and years, that phrase has been used when Jesus passed by. And somebody wrote a song that said, uh, since Jesus passed by, since Jesus passed by, oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. I can't explain it, and I cannot tell you why, but oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. And I want to preach on that for just a few minutes tonight. Oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. Brother well, Mike mentioned it in Sunday school this morning, and he's absolutely right. He said, when you, you, you encounter Jesus Christ, there's going to be a difference. It will make a difference. As a matter of fact, nobody in the Bible ever encountered him and remained the same. It was absolutely impossible uh, uh, that you stay the same and run into Jesus Christ. And he also mentioned this in Sunday school this morning. If you, I don't know if you caught it, but he said sometime, uh, sometimes our heart will get harder, sometimes it will get softer. That's what the gospel will do to you. You'll get meaner or you'll tell you'll him, but you won't stay the same. You meet Jesus Christ or encounter him, nobody remains the same. Nobody ever stayed the same after meeting Jesus Christ. He'll, he's a game changer. I remember... Um, Looking at uh, the time you ever seen on TV or maybe in your local town after a parade and after a Christmas parade has gone through and or maybe one of them football teams comes and they have a victory parade or something and it, a lot of times it'll show New York or wherever it was and I'm telling you there's trash, there's graffiti, there's uh, not graffiti but uh, uh, Confetti, <laughs> or graffiti too, yeah. but uh, confetti laying everywhere, and all them little uh, junk laying everywhere, and cups and bottles and junk. And you say, Lord, have mercy, what come through here? They said the parade come through. Somebody, I, I remember going down, I was preaching down in South Carolina back after Hurricane Hugo. I think it was Hugo come through many years ago, and uh, I came by and I'd see a, a tree laying over in somebody's yard, and then I'd see one smash over a carport and I saw all kinds of damage. I said, I know what's been through here uh, since Hugo passed by. And, oh, what a difference after Hugo. When that thing, that big one hit uh, New Orleans down there a few years ago, you thought the devastation. You, you could look at that community and know something passed by. And you could look at some of them trailer parks and some of them uh, it, would, it was amazing how that one of them would just be completely gone and the other one was left untouched. When a tornado would just take one down and rip it out and jump over two or three more, that's a strange thing. But you know that something passed through. And I remember one time we was going over uh, somewhere over here to Revival one night and uh, there was a uh, 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 timber crew, a wood 
uh, what do you call it, guy working timber uh, uh, lumberjacks or something. Uh, well, they don't call them out around here, but they worked at sawmill and stuff and cut wood for a living. And uh, they had just absolutely cut all these trees down there, laying everywhere, you know, and everything. And there wasn't nothing but stumps and junk laying everywhere. And somebody said, Lord, what happened there? And somebody in the back said, they must have had to bust kids' picnic. <laughs> and I thought, you know, because that's the way it looked, all the devastation and all that. That's really a, a little bit of an illustration but that's not a best illustration. The best illustration of what I'm been talking about tonight would be if you just looked out there one day and there was a big old empty field like you are down there in Florida, there'll be just big old empty fields, 20, 10 or 20 acres sitting out there and then about a year later you go by there and there's a shopping center. And you think, what in the world did that? That's the way it is when Jesus passed by. You know, just see an old man down here somewhere. He's laying in the gutter. I knew an old boy over in Lenore. He was 70 years, 70 years. He had been a drunk and a cuss and a fighter, lived all his life in sin. And you know what? Jesus passed by. That old boy 70 years old. And we went to revival over there one night, and that guy could not hush. He jumped up and down. He had on a shirt and a tie. He shouted. He ran all over that place. He jumped up. Woo! Hallelujah! Let him say something happened. You know what happened? Jesus passed by. Some of my friends I went to school with, they looked at me and said, Danny, what in the world happened to you? I'll tell you what happened. Jesus passed by. Some of you thought, some of your family thought, what in the world got into you? We didn't get religion, brother. We didn't turn over a new leaf. Jesus passed by. I'm glad, thankful tonight, uh, that the Lord passed by me one night. And you know, I've never been the same since. You know, old Nicodemus there in the Bible. The Bible said Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. And he came to Jesus by night. That's also significant. Uh, everybody that comes to Jesus comes by night. Not just dark outside, in darkness, in the in darkness of sin and with a, a veil over them. And old Nicodemus came to the Lord one time. He was, he was, he was curious. And Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. And I, I'd love to have heard that conversation. We got part of it there in John chapter 3. And the Lord's sitting there. And Nicodemus came to him and he said, uh, uh, he, and, and the Lord talked to him and he said, uh, Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. And he said, but uh, uh, I don't understand, Lord. Uh, what are you talking about? And Jesus said, you're a ruler of the Jews and you don't understand these things? And Nicodemus said, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Can a man enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's impossible. And Jesus said, no, you're talking about that fleshly birth. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's that first birth. That's that water birth. You've got to be born of water and of the Spirit. And Nicodemus said, well, the Church of Christ preacher said that meant you've got to be baptized. He said, I didn't say nothing about baptism. I said water. Sometimes they see water and they mean baptism and sometimes they see baptism and they think it's water and that ain't true. And he said you got to be born of water First birth, flesh, spirit. Second birth, spirit. And Nicodemus said, wow, I ain't never heard nobody talk like this. But I'm telling you what, Nicodemus, when he left that night, he went home a different man. And we know he turned into a different man. He, 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 we, we see him pop back up over there in John chapter 19 up at the crucifixion where Nicodemus stayed in there and served God. I believe Nicodemus got saved. I believe Nicodemus is up there in heaven waiting on us tonight. I believe Nicodemus, he said this, what the hand is to the lute, what the lips are to the flute, what the water is to the sea, that's what Jesus is to me. And Nicodemus got up there and he said, oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. We see the widow of Nain there in, in uh, 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 the woman at the well in John, uh, or widow of Nain in John chapter 4, also the woman at the well. And the widow of Nain there in John chapter 4 uh, had lost her child and they was on their way to the funeral. You know that story? Man, what a story, y'all. They was on their way to the funeral. Everybody lined up 
all them camels had their headlights on. Everybody had on their black uh, black clothes. They was walking going down through there, and one of them carrying the coffin, the casket. That's called the bier, B I E R, beer. That's a box in the Bible, and that little dead boy was laying in that box, and they was on their way to the funeral. And about that time, here come the Lord Jesus Christ, and he walked up there. My my my! If, if I, I'd love to make a a, 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 a play, I mean, if I had time, I'd make Bible plays, and I'd have them. Here comes here, here he comes up, and boy, he comes walking up through here like this, and he walked over there, and they said, "Who's that?" And about that time, he reached over there and touched that box, and a lid flew open, and that boy sat up, and he said. Mom, I'm hungry. I'm telling you, they probably like to pass out. That guy leading the funeral procession swallowed his cigar. Uh, he's an old, old, old funeral director there on their way out there to bury them. Bro. I'm telling you, he liked to have a heart attack. I, I imagine he went back in the office that day, pulled his foot down, he said, Myrtle, from now on, make sure they're dead. That's the third time this month that happened. And people repossess the casket, and we have to give them their money back and everything else. And they said, I don't know what's going on, but there's this one preacher, every time he shows up, we don't have a funeral. We have the, the dead man gets up and walks back home. I tell you what happened, everything's different when Jesus passes by. Hey, everybody here, you know what you need in your family? You need Jesus pass by. You need Jesus pass by, your wife, your husband, and your kids. I want Jesus to pass by because, oh, what a difference after he passes by. I heard that story. You've heard me tell it before. I always think about it. This guy said he's going down the road and he's hauling a casket from of a store to another store to restore somewhere. Had back to pick up truck, some old redneck guy doing it for him. And there's a hitchhiker. And uh, he stopped him, picked him up, and he said, Hop in. So the guy got in the back of the truck, sat down there beside that casket. And it, was, and it started pouring the rain. And uh, uh, it is pouring the rain out there. So that guy just opened that lid of that thing, slid down in there, got position you know, and just closed it so he could stay dry. And, uh, and it, it slacked off a little bit. And there's another hitchhiker. Well, that guy pulled over and he picked it up. He said, hop in. He sat back there in the back. And it quit raining. And the sun come out and it got about 100 degrees in there. And that guy was a burning up. And he said he flung the lid open of that thing. That guy slung that lid open, set up and said, well, it's quit raining, ain't it? That, that, that other guy jumped out. <laughs> Jumped out of the truck like to kill himself. I mean, I would too, brother. If a lid flew open on a casket and a man set up, I, I don't know about you, I'm going home, buddy. I don't want to hang around uh, where stuff like that stop, starts happening. I would tell you, brother, nobody could do that but Jesus. I mean, if Benny Hinn could do that, I'd send him a love offering. Uh, but he ain't going to do that. I'm telling you, only him, only Jesus can do that. Oh, what a difference. Somebody asked that woman, what about him and she said this what food is to the hungry man what raindrops are to a thirsty land what the leaves are to the tree that's what Jesus is to me the woman at the well in John chapter 4 was the same thing she had, had, she had been married five times and shacking up with a man she wasn't married to and the Lord read her mind uh, she come to him and she, he said uh, uh, how about give me something to drink and she said, uh, well, we don't even associate with y'all. We, we don't have nothing to do with you. You don't have nothing to do with us. Why are you being a Jew speaking to me, a Samaritan? We don't even talk to each other. Y'all look down on us. You think you're better than us. And Jesus said, if you knew who it was talking to you, honey, you would ask me and I'd give you living water. And you know that story. Uh, she said, okay, I'll give you the drink. And you, Lord, and uh, she said, but uh, Lord, give me this living water. How do I get this living water? And the Lord said, uh... Let's go call your husband. Isn't it amazing how that all them people, the Lord had put his finger right on their sin. You ever notice when God's dealing with a person, you know when, when God deals with somebody, the first thing he's gonna deal with you about is your sin. You gotta get that sin problem took care of first. Before you get into this stuff, we gotta talk about something here, sis. She said, uh, what's that? He said, go call your husband. She said, um, I don't currently have one. 
uh, and he said, you said that right. Uh, you've had five, and the one you're with now ain't your husband. I don't know if that was another woman's husband or just somebody she was shacking up with. And she said, oh, my goodness. I know you couldn't have heard this because your people don't talk to my people, so it couldn't have been gossip. You read my mind. I don't know who you are, but I think you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Long story short, when Jesus passed by, here come that woman. She left her water pot. That's very symbolic. I tell you, when your Lord gets a hold of you, you'll leave whatever you was holding on to. That don't save you. You don't get saved by uh, giving up sins. That, you don't give up sins to get saved. She believed on him and then she said, I think I'll just leave this water pot and she went running into town telling everybody she can son. She said, you ain't gonna believe this. You're not gonna believe this. I met a man up there and they said, you're always meeting men. Big deal. She said, no, it ain't like that. She said, it's not like that at all. This man told me everything I ever done. This man knew my thoughts. He's the Messiah. He the Christ. I don't like you no more and don't ask me for a date and I'm quitting all that old whoring around. I'm going to get my life right and go to church and I'm going to serve God. And they said, I don't know what happened to you. She said, I'll tell you what happened. I didn't join the church. I didn't get baptized. Jesus passed by. Jesus passed by. Jesus passed by. Church, what we need tonight more than anything in this world is for Jesus to pass by us over and over and over. And brother, the next man was blind Bartimaeus. He done the same thing. He looked down at him, blind man cried out, Lord, have mercy on me. Can you imagine that? He'd probably have somebody bring him out there every day and set him down. Every morning, a little wagon or something, I guess, I don't know, pulled up and they set blind Bartimaeus up there and he held up a little sign, said, please help me. That's the only way they could exist back in them days. They wasn't programs and places for the blind and stuff. They just had to go out and beg. And he's sitting out there one day. He wasn't like these guys now. These people now, you don't ever know if they're real or not. The people at Walmart, they're sitting there uh, with their hand out wanting money. I give them money, but honest to goodness, I don't know if they're healthy or sick or, or fine or cheating me or not. My cousin told me that... Uh, he was on drugs and he went over to Iceville and he said, we went out there in the parking lot and begged money all day. He said, we went out there and told them uh, that uh, our, our cars broke down and we need a little help getting gas money and all that because my daughter has to have surgery. He said, people saying they made, I think they made about $500 in one day doing that. Don't get no idea, some of you crooks. I'll see some of y'all out there next week. But, but he said, he said, uh, he said, uh, they was fake. So the blind man one time, there was a blind man standing out there like this. And the blind man standing there like, arms for the blind, arms for the blind. And uh, somebody walked by and said something smart to him. And he turned around and said, hey, boy, I hate you. They said, you ain't blind. You're a faking. You ain't a bit more blind than I am. He said, no, I'm not. I'm standing in for the blind man that's always here. They said, where's he at? He said, he's gone to movies. <laughs> That's the way some of them are now. But, but, but Bartimaeus wasn't like that. Bartimaeus was really blind, really blind. And the Jesus passed by. And every time Jesus passes by, business picks up. Listen, I've been pastoring church a long time, y'all. I've seen preachers try everything in the book. And you know what they're doing now? They're trying all kinds of gimmicks and, and, and worldly music and worldly atmosphere and everything to try to attract people and, and all that. And that's between them and the Lord, whatever they do. But they ain't nothing will change people's heart like Jesus just passing by. The Spirit of the Lord. And when people pray and people live for God, Jesus passed by. And old blind Bartimaeus, he said this, what the glitter is to gold, what the joy is to the soul, what the beauty of flowers and trees, that's what Jesus is to me. And blind Bartimaeus went back home, probably got him a job, got his family, started reading his Bible. And people said, didn't, you, didn't he used to be blind? And they said, yeah. And they said, how in the world?
world. What in the world? What done that to him? Oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. There was no way to explain what happened to me. The night I got saved, the night, you've heard me tell it. I hope y'all don't get tired of hearing my testimony because I'm always going to tell it like the apostle Paul did. I'm always going to tell what the Lord did for me. That night I went was going one way and wham. Man, he turned me around, buddy. I laid in the bed that night. I got saved, and I laid back. I was 18 years old. I was going to ride a motorcycle to work the next day. I had a motorcycle and a little old bitty uh, MG. Remember the little MG, the little bitty two-seater car, like a like a, a Miata, Mazda Miata would be the closest thing you can see to it now. And I, I rode that thing to church that night, and the next day I rode my motorcycle to work and got fired, and I come home, and... Uh, I, I, I felt great that night when I laid down I thought I'm going to heaven I'm going to heaven something happened to me something happened to me something happened to me and I remember that evening we went out to the store we was waiting on church to start that night and one of my best friends pulled up he had a little old bit of yellow Volkswagen I'll never forget it he pulled up the gas tank he jumped out put the gas thing in his car said let's go y'all ready to go play ball and we are sitting there on these drink cartons remember the old wooden drink cart we We'd sit there and lean up against that store, me and my cousin, and we said, can't, can't play ball today. He said, why? I said, we're going to church. And he thought, what? I said, I got saved last night, Jim. I said, I got saved. I'm telling you, he looked like he had seen 14 uh, demons and ghosts and everything else. And he went home, got dressed, and come back that night, and he got saved. And wound up getting called to preach. And God got a hold of me. Listen, people. Listen, people. God, Jesus passed through Nebo. Jesus passed through Nebo. You can show scary movies. You can fuss at young people. You can make all kinds of rules. And I'm not against none of that. I'm for it all, but there ain't nothing will change the direction of a young person or a daddy or a mama's heart like the Lord Jesus Christ passing through. Hallelujah. He changed me. Amen. I'm telling you, that's like the old boy said that time. He said one time, this old guy got saved. He said he went everywhere giving his testimony. He went all over town. He jumped up and he told it everywhere he went. He went up and he said, I, and, and you know, one of them stories where he just jumped up and the whole town knew something had happened to him. And some old smart aleck atheistic guy got his son. He said, your daddy's dreaming. He's dreaming. Ain't nothing happened to him. He's dreaming. And the little boy said, if my daddy's dreaming, please don't wake him up. He said, daddy used to come home drunk and he'd hit mama. He don't do that no more. Daddy used to come home cussing and, and hurt us kids, and Daddy don't do that no more. If Daddy's dreaming, please just leave him alone and don't wake him up. Now, I'm telling you tonight, brother, this old world thinks we're just dreaming. Well, if we are, just leave us alone, brother, because it beats anything this old world's ever had or ever will have. I'm glad me and you've got a hope in the middle of this uh, coronavirus, in the middle of world problems, in the middle of political unrest, in the middle of all kinds of, of violence and crime going on in this world. You and I here sitting here tonight have something deep, deep, deep down inside of us that carries us through, that takes us on through. I mean, we got the same thing Mel Trotter got uh, when he quit drinking immediately, immediately. Uh, we got the same thing Billy Sunday got uh, when God saved him. We got the same thing uh, the old drunk said. There's an old drunk uh, down yonder uh, in, in, in one of the churches I went to one time, and they said he's at a revival, and he said he had a rough family life, he, he, as the boy told me, he went to church with me over here one night, went to revival with me. He said, Danny, I, you can get off any exit from here to exit 100. That's uh, 107, 106, 105, 104, 103, 100. He said, you can get off any exit you want. I can take you to a drug dealer's house. He said, they're all over this place. He said, but the Lord got a hold of me. He said, I don't go there anymore. I don't do that anymore. I don't, ch listen, that, that rehab don't do that. Rehab don't change you from the inside out. And that old boy said, one of them old boys said, when he got saved like that, he said, I 
instantly laid alcohol down, laid drugs down, and I've been free from it ever since. He said, I dumped it. Jesus passed by and delivered me. Sometimes people have a struggle with sin, certain sin for years and years and years. And other times people just drop it just like that. I've had people tell me, they say, when I got saved, I quit smoking just like that. I've heard other people say it drove me crazy for 20, 30 years. But I'll tell you one thing, Jesus passes by you, it'll change you. Oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. I thought I'd just tell y'all tonight, the greatest thing could happen to your family is for Jesus to pass by. I want every parent here to pray, Lord, just come through our home. Maybe in your family devotions or story time or something. Daddies, mama, see if Jesus will get in that. I tell you, some of the best services, two or three of some of the best services I've ever been in was at my house. And you can ask my girl, you probably was one of them, Jeff, a long time ago. I mean, we'd have 50 or 60 people in my house on Sunday night after church and start singing the power of God falling, people out in the driveway, down on their knees, praying, people shouting in the kitchen and running out. It don't have to be in a church building. But when Jesus will pass by, it'll do something to you. I can't explain it. And I cannot tell you why. But oh, what a difference since Jesus. I feel like there's people here tonight and a lot of people that ain't here tonight that's backslid because of the summer. It's hot. We still can't go full steam. We've still got our seats marked. Every, every, there's so many restrictions and stuff and, and the devil just used it on you just to beat you down and beat you down and you don't even know if you're even right with God anymore. I want to tell you, I want to encourage you Get somewhere with God. Get up in the woods, especially during this time when you got a little extra time. If you're not, uh, if you got a little extra time, get in alone with God. Get, get off your phone for a while. Seek the Lord till he comes by you again and get you revived where you need to be. Let's stand by our heads in prayer. Come on, Miss Desi. Are you going to leave here hard-hearted and backslid? Or are you going to say, Lord, pass by me. Pass by my family. Pass by my husband. Lord, pass by my kids. Pass by my wife. Pass by our home. Pass by our church. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Something's coming. She's playing softly. How about it, men? How about it, mamas? How about it? Would you just come and say, hey, oh, Danny, I need Jesus pass by. I sure do need the Lord to just to pass by. I can't explain it and I cannot tell you why. But oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you, Lord, I pray that you'd pass by Shining Light Baptist Church again. Lord, we need it. We need a fresh touch. We need revival. God, we need help from on high. Thank you for these on the altar. Thank you for all these young people wanting to pray. Thank you for them that got fired up after camp. I pray the Holy Spirit of God will just come and do a great and mighty work in our hearts. Have your way in our lives. Do what needs to be done in every life. Lord, as we pray tonight, I pray for those that are sick, those that are backslid, those that just don't care. I pray you'd stir something down in their heart again. Help us to realize this world's not our home, that we're just passing through. Do what ought to be done in our life. We love you and thank you. So I'm still praying tonight. Every head's still bowed. Eyes are still closed. Oh, God help us. God help us. You ought to be so thankful tonight you're healthy and can be in church. You can be in the hospital bed tonight. Machine keeping you alive. You can be in an ambulance tonight on your way to the hospital but God's been good to you let you have the health to come to church don't take it for granted friend don't take that for granted thank God he's given us the privilege of being here yes hallelujah yes hallelujah 
Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah.